Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders to kick off this conversation. So, just a broad overview of the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes. Uh, these are a group of hereditary disorders all involving the connective tissue. And we now recognize 14 different types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome with a wide range of differing presentations. The underlying genes for 13 of these types are known, and these are genes that affect the structural proteins of the connective tissue and the enzymes involved in the processing of these proteins. But the genes underlying the hypermobile type of EDS are not yet known. And for better or for worse, the hypermobile type is the most common type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, affecting um, many, many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the globe. <clears throat> In 2017, Marco Castori and his colleagues put forward a framework for classifying joint hypermobility, which includes the hypermobility spectrum disorders. And uh, the condition we call hypermobility spectrum disorder is one of those uh, hypermobility spectrum disorders. Uh, the spectrum includes persons with asymptomatic joint hypermobility, which may be localized, generalized, or peripheral. Uh, people with symptomatic joint hypermobility, but who do not meet diagnostic criteria for a syndrome. And then there are people with well-defined syndromes with joint hypermobility, and the hypermobile type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome falls under that umbrella. Now, if there's one takeaway from this meeting, it is that EDS and HSD are complex multidisciplinary disorders. And Dr. Heidi Collins, who's a member of our scientific uh, and medical board, coined the phrase, if you can't connect the issues, think connective tissues. So patients who present with this wide range of complicated multi-system uh, complaints seemingly unrelated, it's important to think that there might be an underlying hereditary disorder of connective tissue underlying those symptoms. So musculoskeletal involvement is what generally brings patients to medical attention. Um, the joint laxity and joint instability is a hallmark of both HEDS and HSD. Patients may have subluxations or dislocations due to the joint instability. Some patients have a tendency for tendon rupture and tears. And chronic musculoskeletal pain, unfortunately, is very common. Patients frequently re report that their ankles roll and they have frequent sprains. In the cardiovascular system, orthostatic intolerance is a frequent complication or comorbidity. Patients may present with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome where their heart rate gets really high when they go from lying down to sitting up or standing. Or neurally mediated hypotension where the blood pressure drops on changes in posture. We see mitral valve prolapse. Some people have aortic root dilatation. And unfortunately, chronic fatigue is a common consequence of some of these um, cardiovascular manifestations. Many patients with POTS or neurally mediated hypotension report chronic fatigue. And the chronic fatigue can be one of the most disabling manifestations of these disorders. I've had many patients tell me over the years I can deal with the pain, but it's the fatigue that really takes me out. Neurologic involvement, also many, many different manifestations. So chronic headaches, of which there are many different types, cerebral venous insufficiency, 
Uh, there's an entity called cervicomedullary syndrome, which is related to issues at the place where the head joins up with the spine. Degenerative disc disease, which may happen very early, even in the teenage years, which is highly unusual. Um, instability in the spine, causing neurologic complications. Tethered cord, neuropathic pain, small fiber neuropathy, and brain fog. And here again, that brain fog, the inability to really think, is something that can really, really interrupt people's lives because they're unable to do the things that they want to do with their, with their brain. GI manifestations, another sim system that can really, really influence the quality of life for people. So patients run a wide range of symptoms related to the gastrointestinal tract. Many people report food intolerance, reflux in the esophagus, abdominal pain, gas, bloating, and diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, loss of control of stool, problems with the sphincter of Odi and hernias. All of these things can be related fundamentally to the connective tissue disorder that is HEDS and HSD. In the hematology allergy arena, we have patients with a history of hives, rashes, flushing, itching. All of these things can be related to the mast cell activation. Frequent infections and severe allergies, autoimmune disorders, blood clots, and easy bruising. So patients may find their way into the medical system through any of these uh, areas. But I think the fundamental issue is that our ability to diagnose the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders has far outpaced our ability to treat them. And why are we here? We're here talking to the FDA because the multiple symptoms of EDS and HSD often stop highly productive individuals in their tracks. Lives are interrupted, and some people never regain their former level of functioning. Symptoms are managed individually, often by many different specialists. And as patients have many symptoms, polypharmacy can be a huge issue. So research on therapeutics is desperately needed to help people with EDS and HSD lead energetic, healthy, productive lives without pain. Thank you very much for your attention, and thanks to the FDA for allowing us to be part of this program. And now uh, we have a welcome from the FDA staff, uh, Cynthia Rothblum-Oviat.